welcome to your season of hope. Welcome to another episode of with me of hope with me Pastor Paul John. I am so glad that we can do this together. Friends, I'm not just saying that. I truly mean that. Your response has been overwhelming. Uh, the way you're actively participating in being a partner by spreading this program, by, by sharing it with your friends, with your loved ones, with your colleagues. Thank you. I want to thank you all, especially people watching for, uh, uh, in, in Europe, in America, in Canada. Uh, how, uh, thank you for spreading this. And people in India, wow, Adisayam TV, thank you. And I'm really glad as to how God is using this as an instrument to bring hope into your life. I'm starting, a new, I'm starting a new series today. It's going to be very, very important because I know the Holy Spirit knows what He's doing and I know that when I follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, your life will be met by God. So let's go into today's episode. Welcome to your season of hope. Well, praise the Lord. Let us go to John chapter number 9. John chapter number 9. Hallelujah. John chapter number 9. And reading from verse 1, I'm reading from the New King James Version of the English Bible. John chapter number 9 and from verse 1. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground, made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Therefore the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is this not he who sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But the man said, I am he. Therefore they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went, washed, and I received sight. Then they said to him, Where is he? And he said, I do not know. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. And I want to start a new series today which I title, The Clay and Siloam. The Clay in Siloam. Hallelujah. The clay in Siloam. Say that together with me. The clay in Siloam. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, we, we, are, we are diving into the passage and Jesus is already on his way. It's, it's a scene that is taking place when Jesus is on the move. Praise the Lord. Jesus is always on the move. He's always on the move to meet you right where you are. Jesus is always on the move to meet you at your place of faith to meet you at the place of your need. Jesus has been sent by the heavenly father to reveal to the world who God is. And here we in John chapter 9, we see Jesus on the move. And previously, what's happening previously from John chapter 6, we see uh, Jesus feeding the 5,000 and uh, a great multitude following him and, uh, you know, Jesus sending away his disciples and a lot of things are happening in John chapter number 6. And in John chapter number 7, Jesus comes to his hometown, Capernaum, which is his hometown. And there 
Check this out now. We're talking about Jesus. He had just did a major miracle, major miracle. Nobody has ever seen things like that. I mean, turning bread and fish, five loaves of bread and two-piece fish to feeding 5,000 men, children, and women. Not only that, having 12 baskets full of leftovers. Not only that, walking on water in the midst of the storm. And now he arrives in Capernaum, and we all know what happens in Capernaum. His own family rejects him. His own family rejects him. From Capernaum, he goes again uh, by way of Galilee into Judea. And there he meets rejection by the religious leaders. Not only the religious leaders, but also the leaders that had authority. He, 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 he starts a discourse with them. He's being questioned. He's being battered by questions and people not believing him. He, he, he forgives people. I mean, the lady caught in adultery, but the religious crowd, the people in authority still reject him. In fact, they are infuriated by the way Jesus is treating ordinary people, by the way Jesus is showing grace and compassion. Hallelujah. He shows grace and compassion to the rejected. And the religious crowd is being infuriated, mad, angry. And, and in fact, in fact, uh, in, fact uh, in the end of John chapter 8, Jesus goes on to say that before Abraham was, I am. And this just totally turns the heat up and it's like adding fuel to the fire of jealousy, fire of anger, fire that people were so mad at Jesus. And remember, these were not the common people. These were the religious leaders. These were the people in authority. And as they picked up stones to stone him, Jesus just walks right past. He walks right past them. And he arrives at the scene. He walks right past them out of the temple. And as he's walking by, his eyes meets the blind man whom we meet in John chapter number 9. Friends, here is, my, here is my deal. Regardless of everything that is happening to Jesus, Jesus still spots a blind man. Jesus still spots a man with need. Yes, Jesus is being bombarded. Yes, Jesus is being rejected. Yes, Jesus is going through one of, I mean, I mean a serious time of uh, people close to him rejecting him. His own brothers did not believe him. Hello? His own brothers did not believe him. In the midst of everything, Jesus still passes by and he sees, his eyes see the blind man. I came here today to say, I came here today to say to you, dear friends on hope, regardless of where you are, regardless of what situation you may be in, regardless how, how, of how life has treated you these past few weeks, regardless of who has disappointed you, regardless of who has betrayed you, regardless of if people have just cast you away regardless of regardless of how the devil has tormented you i came to announce to you today that jesus his eyes is on you today hallelujah in the clay of siloam right where you are jesus's eyes is put directly on you directly on the man he was on his way out from trouble he was on his way out as people rejected him he was on his way out as people gathered stones to stone him as he was on his way out Jesus will never pass by a need that he sees Jesus will never pass by a need that captures his eyes Jesus will never pass by allowing you to struggle Jesus will never pass by allowing you to be tormented Jesus will never pass by allowing you to be ostracized and placed in a placed in a box and to be ridiculed by people because of your outward defect or your inward defect. Jesus will never pass you by. I came, I don't know, somebody needs to hear this today. You may be sitting in a bed that is not yours. You may be sitting in a hotel room that is not yours. You may be sitting in a relationship where you know that you need not be there. But I came to tell you and, 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 and maybe you are thinking 
that the Lord has forgotten you. Maybe you're thinking that God is not, God does not longer care about you. No, 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 no. Jesus, Jesus' eyes is on you, my friend, not to condemn you, but to love on you, not to reject you, but to love on you, not to beat you up, but to love on you, not to kick you out, but to invite you back into his wonderful and warm embrace. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Here is Jesus. Here is Jesus. Oh, but before you know, at the outset, in the first episode of this series, Clay in Siloam, I want to talk to you about Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, let's not, let's, let's talk about the blind man later, but let's talk about Jesus. Some of us need to know who Jesus is. Hallelujah. He is the express image of God. Let's go and look into Hebrews chapter number one. Hebrews chapter number one. This talks about who Jesus is. Jesus is the one that revealed reveals who God the Father is to mankind. Jesus is the one that reveals who the heavenly Father is to a fallen world. Jesus is the one who reveals who God is to a man that is lost and dying. Jesus. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 1 and from verse 1, the Bible says, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days, hallelujah, spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. And here is verse 3. Who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high having become so much better than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they here we see who Jesus is. Here we see who Jesus is. So many of us, for us to get to know God, we need to know who Jesus is because when we see Jesus, we see God. God and Jesus cannot be separated from each other. Jesus is the only begotten Son of the Father. And as Jesus walked the streets of Galilee, as he walked Capernaum, as he walked in Judea, in Jericho, in, in all these other Bethesda, all these other places, as we read in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see who Jesus is. I will never forget the time when Jesus met this lady caught in adultery. Just, just in John chapter 8, just one chapter previously. And there, this is where Jesus is. The lady is caught in adultery. And the people bring, and then the scribes and the Pharisees, they bring to him a woman caught in adultery. And I just want to pause there in John chapter number 8 and, and, and wonder, how come they brought only the woman? Where was the man? Hello? Where was the man? Where was the man? And they bring this woman and they tell him in verse 4, Teacher, this woman... Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. In the very act. An adulterous woman. Now so many times you're just talking about the woman, but <laughs> where are the men? Where, where was the man? If she was caught in the very act, where was the man? Religion wants to condemn you. Religion will never seek to, never, will never seek to justify you. Religion wants to beat on you while you're lying down. And I'm so sad to say that we in the church, we do the same thing. We beat on people at the lowest hour in, in, in their life. At the very lowest moments of their life, we beat on them. We, oh yeah, no, you, we may not physically beat on them, but we beat them with the word. We beat them with the words, pastors and preachers and teachers and ordinary 
believers, we, have, we are so full of condemnation that we start to condemn other people. But I believe today is a new day in your life. Today is the beginning of a new season of hope in your life that you will no longer start to beat people, that you will no longer start to use the word of God to put, keep people in bondage. Be like Jesus. Set people free. Be like Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be like Jesus. Set people free. And, and, and Jesus, he never says a word. He just goes down and he starts writing something on the mud. And then, and then, and then, the, and then and in verse 5 in John chapter 8, they say, Now Moses in the law commanded us that such a person caught in adultery should be stoned. What do you say? Jesus says nothing. Jesus says nothing. Jesus says nothing. In verse 6, this they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. Verse 7, so when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. This is God's response. When people accuse you, God, see, see, see how Jesus, see how Jesus is doing this. See how Jesus is doing this. Jesus, 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 hallelujah, Jesus looks right to the crowd that is accusing this lady. Right to this mob of religious people with Bible in one hand and the staff on the other hand, with all this, you know, knowing everything to the degree, to the dotting every I and crossing every T. They knew the law. But they forgot what the law was for. Jesus. Jesus did not come to change the law. No, 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 no. He did not come to change the law. He came to express God through the law. Hallelujah. And how did he express it? He, he told the lady, as everybody dropped the stone and passed away, he told the lady, where, are, where is everyone? Is there no one there? And she said, everybody's gone. And Jesus looks her in the eye and said, go, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. That's Jesus. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Neither do I reject you. Go and sin no more. Neither do I put you in a category and say you are blind and you are of no use. No, 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 no. Neither do I look at you and walk past you and not consider you. No. Neither do I look at you in your misery, in your pain, in your problem, in your trouble, in your turmoil, in your torment, and just pass you by. No! I'm not here to condemn mankind. I am here to judge sin and bring freedom to mankind. Hallelujah. 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 See, the disciples, his own followers, were so full of this, that they immediately, as they saw the blind man, they said, oh, something has been wrong in him. That's why he is blind. I am so sick. And yes, listen, I am so sick and tired of Christians living in the Western world that everything, whenever something happens to them, they got to go right back and, oh, maybe I did something. Oh, maybe this and oh, maybe that and oh, maybe that. You know, we become partners with the devil when we go fishing for stuff that God has forgiven you from. But Jesus shuts them all up. Shuts them all up. Shuts them all up. It's time for you to shut people up when they start saying, oh, my life is like this because, oh, I have cancer in my body because I, I'm this, or, oh, I have diabetes, oh, I have typhoid, I'm this, oh, my, this. no, 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 no. God does not send sickness. Please listen to me. The God, hallelujah, God is the God that heals you. He is Jehovah Rapha, hallelujah. He has made a covenant with you and he says, I am the God that heals you. Not the God that sends sickness on you. 
No. He heals you from your sickness. He delivers you from your sin. He grants you forgiveness from everything that has caused you to fall. And He lifts you up again. That is the God we serve. That is the Jesus we need to preach in this world today. The world does not need any more bad news. The world has got so much of bad news, but there needs to come somebody at the place of Silawam where you may find yourself in. Somebody at the place of trouble where you may find yourself in. Somebody just outside the temple that you may find yourself in and tell you that there is hope for you. There is hope for a brighter tomorrow hallelujah your life will never be the same again hallelujah your tomorrow will be better than your yesterday hallelujah oh glory to God there are good days ahead of you than bad days behind you God is a good God my friend and when Jesus steps into your life when he passes you by he stops and he looks at you and he does not let you be the same he changes you from inside out. The clay at Silawam. The clay at Silawam. Hallelujah. Let there be a touch today with a master that can change your whole life. Hallelujah. God bless you. Stay tuned and keep coming, keep coming, keep coming every week. And we will continue. This series is going to open your eyes and it will bring you hope like never before. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, my friend. We need to know who Jesus is. We need to know who Jesus is. When we get to know Jesus, we, we also get to correct our ideas, our, our doctrine, whatever it is that, that causes us to see differently than how Jesus sees things. Especially, especially I want to talk to people that, you know, church people and religious Christian people. I need, I'm going to ask you today, I need you to get a fresh vision of who Jesus is. I need you to get a fresh vision of who Jesus is. Don't, don't just have a blurred, 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 foggy understanding and vision of who Jesus is. Your understanding of Jesus will help you in your life. My father, you know, when I grew up, my father who was a pastor in India, he always used to say, he, he used to quote A.W. Tozer, and he would say this, the God that you worship is the kind of people that you will become. The kind of God that you worship is the kind of person you will become. If you're worshiping a God that is greedy and looks down on people, condemns people, that's the kind of person you'll become. But Jesus always uplifts people. I want to give you an opportunity to receive this Jesus into your life. Would you pray with me? Father, yes, I come to you in Jesus' name. Wash me of my sin. Cleanse me. Make me whole. Jesus, I boldly confess that you are my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want to welcome you in the family of God. Remember, you're an heir and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. I'll see you again next week on this show, Hope, with me, Pastor Paul John.